Today what we'll talk about is summarizing and graphing data in JUMP. We'll see how to analyze data in JUMP, and this will involve univariate statistics and graphs, bivariate and multivariate. We'll see the tools for multivariate analysis, some advanced modeling tools, uh, and we'll revisit some resources for getting started with JUMP and learning JUMP. I'm going to use a journal throughout this webinar and a journal uh, allows you to capture notes and links to files so it gives me shortcuts to some files and throughout this webinar I'll be using data from the sample data directory under the help menu. So I'm going to open up a file US demographics. Uh, so this is the data set that has uh, 16 columns. Uh, again recall that this icon next to variables indicates the modeling type for the variables. So we've got nominal uh, state is categories, blue is continuous data, and this, this data set doesn't have any ordinal variables. If it did, you'd see green bars. So let me put this back to continuous. Uh, we have 50 rows, so we've got one row for each state. And to revisit some of the tools for summarizing and graphing data in JUMP, under the columns menu, you'll see an option columns viewer. And this is a nice starting point for summarizing variables. In fact, I'm going to click and drag and select all of the variables. If I select show quantiles, it'll show the medians uh, and also the percentiles. So I'll select this and hit show summary. And this provides a nice high level overview. If we're missing any values under end missing, in fact, we're missing one value for physical, physical activity. Uh, we'll see the number of categories, so we've got 50 states, we've got four regions, we see the mins and the maxes. We also see how our data are coded. So household income is coded as currency, while latitude and longitude are coded as geographic data. So a nice high-level summary. Now if I want to be able to produce pictures along with those graphs, we use the distribution platform. And again, I'll select all of my variables. I'll leave out latitude and longitude. I've got one observation per state, and since I'm not fundamentally interested in this variable from an analysis perspective, I'll click on this gray disclosure icon to tuck it away. So now we see the distribution for household income, IQ, region, and if you're relatively new to jump, I'll point out that all of these graphs are linked together. So if I click on a bar in one graph, it'll highlight the observations in every other graph and also the data table. Every graph is interactive, so I can dynamically resize the graphs. And by default, JUMP will provide output that makes sense for the type of variables that we're looking at. So IQ is continuous. We see a histogram, box plot, and summary statistics. We can ask for additional summary statistics under the red triangle. In fact, every window in JUMP has red triangles that provide additional options that make sense for the type of data we're looking at. And we'll revisit some of these as we go along. So distribution provides both a high-level summary statistics and graphs. And recall that this is a review, so I'm going relatively quickly through uh, summarizing and graphing data. Under the Analyze menu, and if you have Jump 10, it'll be under Tables, is this option Tabulate. And what Tabulate provides is a nice platform for dragging and dropping and summarizing variables. So for example, if I'm interested in looking at household income. I can drag and drop household income to one of the zones and as I hold this variable on top of the zone you see a blue box surrounding that zone. And this indicates that if I let go the jump will do something with this variable. So here it's summed up the household incomes. These are average household incomes for each of the states. And in the middle panel we see statistics that you can use instead of the sum. So if I click and drag to select statistics and drop these right on top of the word sum, jump will replace the sum with the statistics that I've selected. So here I'm looking at the average uh, household income and the standard deviation. And now that other drop zone is now a tiny little box. And if I drag and drop, for example, region into this box, then it'll automatically summarize by region in alphabetic order. To save my work, I can hit the Done button and we call this panel a control panel. If I hit done, it'll close the control panel. And then if I want to save my work under the red triangle, there's an option script 
and Save Scripted Data Table. And this will save the keystrokes for recreating this analysis later. You can also easily copy and paste to another program or save in a graphics format. So this is Tabulate, and a graphical version of this is under the Graph menu, and it's called Graph Builder. And I'm going relatively quickly just to give you a review. We'll come back and visit the analytic tools uh, in a few moments. Uh, so this is a Graph Builder, and this is similar to Tabulate in that we've got drop zones. And in fact, we've got a lot of different drop zones. So this is a really nice dynamic way of graphing our data, and it's very interactive. So I'll grab household income as a Y variable. And across the top, we see a number of graph icons. And these graph icons allow us to change the display. So for example, if I click on histogram, now I've got a histogram of household income, box plot. If I click and drag, I can add additional elements onto the picture. If I make a mistake, I can click start over. So let's say I'm interested in looking at household income as my Y variable. And I'm interested in looking at differences or potential differences between the regions. I'll click and drag region, and there are a number of different zones. Here's a group zone. Overlay simply means put them all one on top of the other. Wrap creates a trellis plot. Group Y zone. I'll drop this at the bottom under X. And across the top, we see the graph icons that make sense. Fitting a line doesn't make sense. That's the third icon over. But I can ask for a bar chart, or I can connect the means. And in fact, if I click and drag, this will add the line connecting the means. I can ask for box plots. So the challenge is to get your data to tell a story. And this is a really nice way to, to get a lot of information out of your data. I'm going to hit Start Over. Um, this is also one of the platforms in Jump that does geographic mapping. So if I click and drag State to the Shape Zone, and this allows us to access the shape files that come installed with Jump, but you can also add your own shape files. And one of the things I like about this is that it lets me graph my variables geographically. So for example, if I'm interested in looking at the differences between the states in terms of population, I can drag and drop population either right on top of the graph or to the color zone. And I can see that there are some pretty big differences in population or I can drag a different variable there and it'll automatically update. I want to talk about two tools for interacting with any graph or any analysis that are very powerful. I'm going to click Done here to close the control panel. Under the red triangle next to Script are two options for allowing me to update this graph. Local Data Filter allows me to update this picture based on values of another variable and the Column Switcher allows me to switch out my X's. So I'm going to select Column Switcher and 8th Grade Math. So I'm going to essentially switch out 8th Grade Math for all of these other variables. And this works for any analysis or any graph. So I can click through and toggle through and dynamically update this graph. Let me remove this. And the second tool is the Data Filter. And what the Data Filter allows me to do is stratify this picture based on values of a variable in my data set. So for example, if I want to be able to look at the different regions, I can select the different regions. And it's automatically updating this picture. And this is a local data filter, so it's not interfacing with my data set. So if I have hidden and excluded values, uh, it's not going to disrupt that. Uh, but there's a global data filter available under the rows menu called Data Filter. So let me close this. And let's get started on analyzing data in Jump. The Analysis Options in Jump fall under the Analyze menu. And the, the way we think about analysis is based on our data structure. If I'm interested in univariate graphs or statistics, I'll use the distribution platform. If I'm interested in bivariate graphs or statistics, I'll use FitYByX. So this will give me simple linear regression, two sample t-test or ANOVA, a contingency table, or logistic regression. Match pairs is for a paired t-test. We've already seen Tabulate, which allows you to do dynamic summaries of your data. And notice as I drag my mouse over these options, we're seeing a list of features that are available from each menu item. Fit Model is a very broad and flexible modeling platform that's used anytime we have multiple X's or multiple Y's. 
So I'm going to spend most of the time here on distribution fit y by x and fit model, but we'll touch base on some of the advanced modeling tools. Partition is our classification and regression trees. Neural networks. A model comparison is for, for comparing competing models. And this is a feature that's available only in the professional version of Jump. So I'm showing you the professional version. Most of what we'll see is in the standard version of Jump, uh, but tools like model comparison and advanced modeling methods are available only in Jump Pro. Under multivariate, you'll see things like multivariate, which is pairwise comparisons, clustering, this is hierarchical and k-means, principal components, and discriminant. And we'll, we'll touch on some of these as we're going along. So let's start with distribution. In fact, I'm going to open up a data set. This is another data set from the sample data directory. This is called fitness. So this is a fitness study, and the response of interest is oxy. And one of the things I typically do with, with data sets when I'm working with them is I like to put the y variables at the very beginning of my data set. So if I click on a variable and drag, I can move that to the beginning of the data set. So there's oxy. And what we're doing is we're measuring the oxygen uptake based on sex, age, the weight, how long it took to run a mile, the run pulse, the resting pulse, and max pulse. So let's look at these in distribution. Again, I can select every variable at once and select Y columns. And I'll remove name. Name isn't of fundamental interest here, so I'll click on name and hit remove and then click OK. Now when you first open Jump, you'll probably see a view that looks like this. And if you don't like that view, you can change it under Preferences, which is either under File or Jump if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to simply hit Stack, and this is the view that I, I prefer. So again, we see a histogram, a box plot, and some summary statistics. Under the summary statistics, by default, we get a 95% confidence interval for the mean. Options under the red triangle include different display options. I can ask for a normal quantile plot. And all of these options are toggle switches, which I can turn on and turn off. Stem and leaf, CDF. Test mean is for performing a one sample t-test, and we'll come back to this in just a moment. We can ask for confidence intervals with different confidence levels, different types of intervals. We can also fit different types of distributions. So let me go up and hit test mean. So let's do a one sample t-test. And one of the things you'll note in Jump is that the menu items, we don't refer to the menu items under the name of the test. We refer to them more broadly in terms of what that option will do. So here you want to test the mean, and as you hold that your mouse on top of this, It'll give you a little hint in terms of what type of analysis is available if we choose this option. So from here, we can do a one sample t-test, or we can do a one sample z-test. And from all of the parametric methods in Jump, you'll also see the ability to perform the corresponding non-parametric methods. So if we want the Wilcoxon signed rank test, we can also perform it from here. But let's simply do a one sample t-test. I'm going to pick a value on the outer bounds of our confidence interval. So let's say we're hypothesizing that the average oxygen uptake is 49.5. I'll click OK. And every analysis in Jump gives you new output, and we try to give a graph with every analysis to help you interpret what Jump is doing. So we've got this new test mean panel. What the graph represents is the distribution of, of all sample means size 31 that we would observe under the null hypothesis. The hypothesized value is 49.5. We observed an actual estimate, a sample mean of 47.37, and that's drawn at this red line. And then the area in the tails corresponds to the p-value. Under the t-test, we see the test statistic. And then anywhere in jump where you see something that looks like this, prob greater than something, this is how we represent p-values. So prob greater than the absolute value of t, this is the p-value corresponding to the two-tailed test. The other two, this one right here, the sign corresponds to the sign that's in our alternative hypothesis. So in this case, our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 
49.5, and in this case, the mean is less than 49.5. Now, if you struggle with p-values or if you're new to statistics, there's a really nice feature under the red triangle called p-value animation. And there's also a power animator, but we'll focus on this p-value animation. And what this allows you to do is explore the p-value as the distance between our hypothesized value and our observed value changes. So this curve is drawn at our hypothesized mean, the line is drawn at our observed sample statistic, and note what happens if I click on this grabber and increase the distance between those two. The t-ratio is simply a measure of distance, of standardized distance. The further apart these two values are, the larger the t-ratio, in absolute sense, and the smaller the p-value. The closer together they are, the smaller the t-ratio, and the higher the p-value. So it's a really nice tool if you teach for talking about p-values. It's also a nice tool for trying to get your hands around what the test statistic represents and what the, what the p-value uh, represents as well. Now this is also a nice place to do ad hoc power analysis. So for example, I've got 31 observations here. What would this curve look like if I had 100 observations? or if I only had 10. So again, this was an option under the red triangle next to test mean. Now if I'm dealing with proportions, as I am here under sex, let's say that I'm hypothesizing that the, the breakdown of males and females rep represents the proportions in the overall population. Again, I've got options here. I've got fewer options for categorical data than I do for continuous data. I'll select test probabilities, and let's say I'm hypothesizing 50% females and 50% males. By default, Jump will select a two-sided chi-squared test. I'll click Done, and again you'll get a p-value, and in this case the reference distribution is the chi-squared, and you get a test statistic. So this is looking at univariate graphs and statistics. What about bivariate? So if I'm interested in looking at one variable against a second variable, I'll use fit y by x. The key in the bottom corner tells us what type of analysis jump will do based on the variables that I've selected. So for example, I'll click and drag oxy as my y response. The key on the side corresponds to the modeling type for our y variable. So for continuous response, the two options are bivariate and one way. Let's select a categorical factor, sex. So across the bottom, the icon corresponds to the modeling type for a categorical variable. So here the two options are one way and contingency. So jump is telling us that if we use oxygen at uptake as our y and sex as our x, jump will take us to the one way platform. But we can also do multiple analyses at the same time. So for example, if I'm interested in looking at age and also weight, so three combinations of variables, oxy versus age and oxy versus weight will take us to the bivariate platform. Let me click OK. And the options that will be available will again be based on what we've selected for variables. So in this case, I've got sex, two categories of sex, and if I click on the red triangle, we see things like means, ANOVA, pooled T, so this is under the assumption of equal variances, t-test, the ability to compare means. If I had more than two categories, the second option would update to means ANOVA. We've got a variety of different non-parametric methods available, unequal variance tests, equivalence tests. Uh, we do have robust methods in several platforms, and several options down towards the bottom under display options. In contrast, if we've got a continuous variable versus a continuous variable, we see different options. So in the one-way platform, we're assuming that we're comparing means. In the bivariate, we're assuming that we want to fit something. And if I select fit line, it'll do simple linear regression. So let's take a look at what these analyses look like. I'll click in the red triangle, and I'll select t-test. So jump gives us, again, a nice graphic to, for trying to interpret our results. This is the distribution of all sample differences we would observe under the null hypothesis. And here our hypothesis is that, the, is that the means are equal, or that the mean difference equals zero. On the side, we see the p-value. 
so prob greater than t. This is the p-value for the two-tailed test. And we also see the observed difference and the confidence interval for the difference. Notice that zero does not fall in that interval. In contrast, if I select means ANOVA pool T, you'll see what we call means diamonds. And if we had three or more groupings, we would rely on these as a nice visual to allow us to assess potential differences between groups. The tips of the diamond represent 95% confidence intervals. And the output below will look very similar. So let me tuck this away, and let's talk about bivariate. In this case, I've got oxy versus age. If I click on the red triangle, fit line is asking for simple linear regression. So jump fits the line. Here we get the estimated equation for the line, some summary statistics, a whole model test for significance of the model, and down at the bottom we see the parameter estimates. If you're interested in confidence intervals for the parameter estimates, if you right click on any table, these are all live tables, and in some cases you can ask for additional statistics that aren't displayed. I'll ask for columns, and then lower 95 and upper 95 correspond to the confidence intervals. If I'm doing multiple regression, I can also ask for VIFs by right clicking on the parameter estimates table. One option that I'll point out that's available everywhere in Jump Pro is bootstrapping. If I, if I select bootstrapping in a parameter estimates table or any other table, Jump will automatically perform bootstrapping for whatever values we see in that table. And again, this is a feature only in Jump Pro. For any line that I fit or model that I fit here in Fit Y by X, we'll see some additional options right below the graph. If I click on this red triangle, we can ask for additional options relating to this fit. So for example, before looking at the statistics, I probably want to look at the residuals. I'll select Plot Residuals, and down below we'll see four different residual plots. And these should be looked at before we look at the statistics behind the test. Other options available, uh, you can um, save values out to the data table, and anywhere in Jump where you've created a model, you can save the predicted results. You can also save the prediction formula to be able to predict out of sample data. I will point out one thing here. Uh, if you're looking for correlation, you won't see the word correlation in the list. What you'll see is an option called density ellipse. If I select density ellipse 0.95, this will draw an ellipse that encompasses 95% of our data. And down below you'll see the correlation. So it's tucked away if you're looking for it here. You can also ask for correlations under multivariate methods, multivariate. And we'll get to this in a few moments. Now I'm going to open up a second data set. And what happens if our response is categorical instead of continuous? So I'll open Titanic Passengers. And this is the data, uh, again, this is in the sample data directory, on all of the passengers of the Titanic. My response variable of interest is survived. And I've got variables like passenger class, sex, age, siblings and spouses, and parents and children. If I go back to fit Y by X and select survive as my response, now I'm going to be on the bottom of this key. My two options if I've got a categorical response are logistic regression or contingency table and chi-square. I'll ask for passenger class as my x. I'll also ask for sex so we can contrast uh, passenger class is three level and sex is two and jump will provide different results for these. And I'll also ask for some con continuous variables. So in these cases where I've got a categorical response versus continuous x, jump will perform logistic regression. The plot you see is called a mosaic plot. The key on the side tells us the breakdown of yeses versus no. And if I hold my mouse over a bar, then I see the breakdown, so 38.2% of all passengers did survive, whereas 61.8% did not survive. Across the bottom, this is also a key for the breakdown of passenger class, first, second, and third. So we have a lot more third class passengers than we did second or first. And then within each class, we see a breakdown of no versus yes. 
So 74.5% of the third class passengers did not survive versus 38.1% of the first class passengers. We see a contingency table and by default you'll see test statistics and a variety of options under the red triangle. So you can change the alpha level, do analysis of means for proportions, and if you have Jump Pro you can also perform exact tests. Now in contrast, I'll look at this plot here where I'm looking at a two level versus a two level, we have quite a few more options. So we could ask for relative risk, odds ratio, and also a two sample test for proportions. So from this we can see that the survival rate for first class passengers was higher. It was also higher for females. And let's scroll across to one of these plots. I'll look at this last one. This is logistic regression. And what Jump is doing is it's plotting the x variable across the bottom. And on the y axis we've got the probability the points are graphed at the corresponding position relative to the x and either below the line or above the line based on whether they were a yes or a no. So the relative position on the y-axis uh, is irrelevant. What's important is their position relative to this, this line. So all of these points across the bottom were no's. They, they did not survive. All the points on the top did survive. And the way we read the graph is we're asking the question, what happens to the probability of no, whatever value is the lowest, what happens to the probability of no as the number of parents and children a passenger was traveling with increases? And we see that the probability of no actually decreases. And I use, like to use a tool across the top, which is the skinny plus sign for looking at the values. So if I, if I click on the plus sign and click right on the line where a person was traveling alone, we see the probability of not surviving is 0.64 and if we drag that to the higher end we see that the probability drops to 0.4. The probability of surviving is 1 minus that. And down below you see a bunch of default statistics. So this is the Fit Y by X platform and we encourage you to explore the options that are available. I'm, I'm only giving you the highlights. But let's take a look now at a situation where we have multiple X's or multiple Y's. And I'm going to go back to the fitness data. So I want to build a model to predict oxygen uptake as a function of all of the variables except for name. For this, I'll use fit model. And this is a very flexible modeling platform. Under personality, these are the different types of analyses you can conduct from here. By default, if I ask for oxy as the y, the personality changes to standard least squares. So this is ordinary least squares regression. If I click on the arrows, we see other things we can do from here. So we can perform stepwise regression. And this also performs all possible models. In Jump Pro, you'll see a few extra options. So if you're at a school that has a campus-wide license, uh, you'll have access to Jump Pro. From here, I can do generalized regression. And this allows you to fit different response distributions and it also provides uh, several penalized regression methods. In Jump Pro we'll also see some advanced mixed models but we can do a simple mixed model if you just have Jump uh, and some additional options down below. So let's go ahead and build our model. My response is Oxy and I'm going to select all of the variables and click Add. So I've added these as terms to the model. If we want to add an interaction I'll select, for example, sex and age. To add an interaction, I'll simply hit the cross button. And this is how we represent an interaction. One thing I'll point out from here is that when you've got categorical variables, there's no need to indicator code or dummy code. Jump will handle this for us. So I'm going to fit this model where I've got a bunch of main effects and I've got one two-way interaction. And I'm simply going to hit run. By default, you'll see some graphics. So for sex, I've got least square means table. I can ask for things like contrasts, a power analysis. I can also just tuck these guys away if I don't want to look at them. So I'm just cleaning up my display. And let's focus on the main part of the output. The graph we see helps us to understand the significance of our model. We call this the actual by predictive plot. On the y-axis, we see what we actually observed for the response. Across the bottom, we see what our model predicts that we get, 
plus a number of different summary statistics. The blue line represents the overall mean, and the confidence bands, these dashed lines, represent confidence interval for the predicted mean for particular observations. If I scroll down, we see certain default statistics, the whole model test, the parameter estimates for the terms in the model, and under the red triangle, a number of different options, including diagnostics. So I can ask for different reports. If I want to see the, the form of this equation or this model that I've built, I can ask show prediction expression. I can show the estimates in different ways. I will point out that JUMP uses a minus one plus one coding scheme for categorical variables. So if you'd like to see the categorical variables coded using the zero one scheme, select indicator parameterization estimates. Other options that are available include some nice graphics, press and some additional residual plots, and you can save a number of diagnostics and other values to the data table. So for example, if I want to be able to make predictions, I can ask for prediction formula. If I'm looking at uh, influential values, and I, I can ask for Cook's D, and these will all create a new column in the data table. I'm going to focus now on one of my favorite graphing tools here called the Profiler. And what the Profiler does, let me tuck some of this away, the Profiler allows us to interact with the model we've just built. So I can see that there are some things that are significant. The interaction term has a p-value of 0.08, so it's sort of borderline. But what this allows me to do is change the values of an x to see what happens to the predicted response. In fact, I'm going to open up parameter estimates. Some of the parameter estimates are negative. So if I look down below, the slope for age, for example, decreases. Weight is pretty flat. Runtime has a much steeper slow slope, as does run pulse. And if I change these values, by clicking on the vertical line and dragging, notice the jump is changing the predicted response across the values for the other variables. So without changing the other variables, if I'm just changing age, I can see how the predicted oxy is changing. And the values in brackets are the confidence interval for the mean at these settings. If you're doing work in design experiments or optimization, from the red triangle, you can ask for things like a sensitivity indicator, you could do Monte Carlo simulators, and you can also ask for things like the variable importance to be able to dissect which variables are most important in terms of predicting the variability or explaining the variability of the response. So this is fit model for a continuous response. What if I've got a categorical response? So let me go back to the Titanic data, and it's the same basic setup. In fact, this fit model platform can be used if you've got observational data, if you've got design of experiments data. It's very, very broad and very, very flexible. So let me select survive this time as my response. And here the personality is nominal logistic regression. And I'll build a model. I've got passenger class and a few variables here. In fact, if I want to be able to add all two-way inter interactions, if I click on a variable and I'll hold down the control key, and click and select other variables. If I want to be able to add in all possible two-way interactions, if I go into the black triangle where it says macros, factorial to degree, well, the degree is two, this will add up to two-way interactions. And you can change this to add whatever higher order interactions you'd like. So let me go ahead and click Run. So I've just performed logistic regression. I have a whole model test. I have some summary statistics, including the misclassification rate. Again, I've got parameter estimates for this model, and I've also got effect tests. And some of the two-way interactions are not significant, and others are. Under the red triangle, we see things like odds ratio, the ROC curve, and lift curve. Again, I can save the probability formula. And I'll ask for the profiler just so we can understand what our model is telling us. Let me tuck some of these things away. And we read this profiler in much the same way we would read a profiler for a continuous response, except in, instead of showing the mean, we're showing the predicted probability. So for example, if I change passenger class from first class to second class to third class, we see the predicted probabilities change. We also see, for example, if I change from female to male, notice how the slope for passenger class changes. 
and this is a sign of an interaction. In fact, if I look under parameter estimates and find passenger class and sex, I can see that some of these interactions are very significant. So a really nice way for getting your hands around interactions and also for exploring predicted values based on your model. So let me close this and close fitness. And so far we've talked about summarizing and graphing data in Jump. So we saw the columns viewer for summarizing data. We saw tabulate for summarizing data. We saw distribution for graphing and summarizing data and also the graph builder. Under basic analysis so far, we've seen distribution for looking at univariate graphs and statistics, fit y by x for looking at one variable against another, and we saw fit model for looking at multiple x's versus a single y. So now what we're going to do is briefly overview some of the multivariate methods available, and then also some of the advanced models. Under the Analyze menu, Multivariate, we see several different multivariate methods. I'm going to open up a data set, Body Measurements. Again, this is from the sample data directory. So here what we're looking at is we've got 22 individuals, and we've taken a number of different measures, and the response of interest is mass. To be able to look at pairwise correlations, I'll use multivariate methods, multivariate. I'll select all of the variables of interest, Y columns, and the estimation method will update based on the structure of our data. So if we're missing values, or we've got a long wide data set versus a, a narrow long data set, jump will default to a different estimation method for correlations. Here I'll simply go with the default and click OK. By default we see a table of bivariate correlations and it's color coded so the stronger the positive correlation the more blue, the stronger the negative correlation the more red, and we see a scatter plot matrix. And this is interactive, so if you decide that you want to see one variable higher than another, you can simply click and drag in the scatterplot matrix. And again, you see a number of different options under the red triangle. So if I want to be able to shade the ellipses, uh, or I'd like to be able to fit lines through these, uh, again, you can customize this based on, on your needs. Options under the red triangle include things like partial correlations, simple statistics, a number of non-parametric correlations, and from here you can also access color maps, a parallel plot, and ellipsoids. Two options towards the bottom, uh, item reliability if you're looking at survey responses, and outlier analysis. And upcoming in Jump 12 are some additional features for outlier analysis. If you're missing values in your continuous data set, from here you'll also see impute missing. So there'll be an option to impute missing values if you're actually missing values from your data table from this platform. So let's stick with the same data set and let's look at, under multivariate methods, principal components. And again, I'm just I'm flying through this relatively quickly just so you can see what's available. So principal components, I'll select all of my X's. So this is a dimension reduction technique where we're trying to find how many independent pieces of information we have in our data set or in our X's. By default, you're going to see the eigenvalues. You'll see a plot showing component one, principal component one, and how much variation principal component one explains versus two, and you'll see a loading plot. And as always, there are additional options under the red triangle. So if I'd like to be able to see eigenvectors, so the loadings on my principal, principal components, or I'd like to see the eigenvalues with a little more information that we have up above, here we can see that the first three principal components explain about 85% of the variation in the data set. And a nice tool if you've got Jump Pro is cluster variables. And this will help us to dissect which of the X's are most important in the data set. I'll open up a different data set. Uh, if you're interested in clustering, the serial data is nice for thinking about clustering. Here what we're trying to do is we're looking at uh, a bunch of different serials and we've got a, a lot of different measurements. And I might be interested in knowing if there are certain clusters or commonality between, between these different serials. So again, under multivariate methods, I can ask for the option clustering. And by default, we'll see hierarchical. If we've got a very large data set, it'll switch over to k-means. 
lots of options that you can change here. We do have a lot of robust methods uh, throughout Jump, so you'll see that here. I'll ask for all of my serials, and I'll label by uh, the name of the serial. And as in the, is the case in most of Jump, you'll see that this, this is very colorful and also interactive. So if I'd like to change the number of clusters that are plotted, I can simply click and drag. And options under the red triangle include things like color the clusters, mark the clusters, we can do two-way clustering from here, uh, and we can also save the clusters out to the data table. So very quick peek at clustering. And since we're running a little short on time, I'll just point out that from multivariate methods, we also have the ability to do a discriminant analysis and partial least squares. So let's talk a little bit about, about some advanced methods. Uh, in Jump, if you're in the FIT model platform, you can access uh, MANOVA and mixed models. And under modeling, we have tools like classification and regression trees and neural networks. So let me close this data set down. And let me open up animals. So this is, again, some sample data. And what we're looking at is how many miles uh, different subjects within two different species traveled in certain seasons. So this is the design where subject is specific to, to species, and I'm fundamentally interested in miles. Now if the data are structured in this sort of a format, and I'm going to, just to, to save time, I'm going to run a script. Within fit model, we can specify a nest structure, and we can also specify random effects. So I've indicated a species is an X, subject within species, and I've specified this as a random effect. I'm also interested in looking at species and the interaction between species and season. So this is a mixed model, and my response is miles. And there's usually questions on how to put this term in the model, subject nested within species. To do this, I'll enter subject into the model. I'll select subject and then species and then click the nest button. And in nested effects are always random effects, so under attributes, I'll specify this as a random effect. And when you add random effects to a model here, jump will automatically default to REML. I'll click Run, and you'll see that we've got parameter estimates, and we've also got variance components. So it's recognizing that subject nested within species as a random effect and computing the variance components. Now if your data are in wide form rather than stacked form, and I'll open up a different data set, this is cholesterol, then you can also do MANOVA from the FIT model platform. So I'll select FIT model, and in this case I'm going to specify all of these values, so what we're doing is we're looking at cholesterol levels for different treatments over time. So I'll specify each of these as a response, one effect, and that's called treatment. And under personality, if I want to do this as a repeated measure sort of design or MANOVA, I need to change this to MANOVA. And then click Run. And we won't go into all the options, but there are a lot of different types of structures that we can fit here. In this case, this is simply a repeated measure sort of design where we're looking at the, the response over time. And for each analysis type that you select, you'll see corresponding graphs and then statistics. Now, if I've got my data in stacked form, we won't spend a lot of time here, but I want to point out that in Jump Pro, there's a new personality called Mixed Model. And this will allow you to fit a variety of different repeated structures. So, this is that same data, in fact, let me close this analysis, where I've got the data stacked, so I've got it in long form rather than wide form. And here I've specified, I've got three effects, treatment, month, and AM, PM, plus the two-way interactions and the three-way interactions. If I've got random effects, uh, random intercepts or random slopes, I can add those here, and then I can also pick the repeated structure. So if you have Jump Pro, uh, there are seven different repeated structures that can be fit in Jump Pro. And again, you always see the actual by predictive plot. Here are parameter estimates for all the terms we fit. 
and the fixed effects. So I know I'm going fast, but hopefully you're getting a feel for, at the high level, some of the things that jump can do. I'm going to go back to the Titanic data. And if you're not familiar with classification and regression trees, just a brief introduction to what we do here. So I'm going to select modeling partition. Now this is the data that we fit a model for before where we're looking at survived versus passenger class, sex, age, and two other continuous variables. From this platform, we can produce decision trees. If you have Jump Pro, you can also use validation. And there are additional methods that are available for building these trees. This is a really nice way of trying to sort out which of the X's are most important. Uh, it's also a nice predictive modeling tool. So just a sneak peek at how this works. So I've select, selected survived and five different variables. I'll click OK. By default, we get a breakdown of no's versus yeses. So recall we saw that there were more passengers who did not survive than did survive. Again, lots of options under the red triangle. I'm going to turn on this option show split count so we can see some of the numbers behind what we're doing here. And if you call, recall in logistic regression, there were some variables that were highly significant. If I click split here, what Jump is going to do is it's going to sort through all of those variables and it's going to find split points or cut points that push the probability of survival as far apart as possible. And this icon next to candidates shows me which variable is most important. So here, if I split on sex, and Jump will actually do this automatically, it'll push the probability of survival as far apart as possible. So I'll hit split. And we can see the different survival rates for females versus males. I'll split again. And it's also splitting the graph up above. For females, it says the most important variable is passenger class. So if you are a first class or second class female, the survival rate was 0.93. If you were third class, it was only 0.49. And as I split again, this time it split on male, and here we've got age. And this is a nice way of seeing an interaction. What we're doing is building a series of if-then statements. If male and under or over the age of 10, this is what we'll see as a predicted result. So a very sneak peek at predictive modeling and jump. Uh, I will point out that there are a lot of resources for helping to get started in jump. Uh, if, if you have any takeaways from this, um, hopefully you'll write down this link, jump.com slash teach, which provides access to all of our teaching resources, including a learning library, a case study library, uh, and we have a number of additional on-demand, which are recorded and live webinars available, and our new academic community, which is simply community.jump.com slash academic. If you have questions on how to get Jump, uh, Schools are eligible for a campus-wide license. Uh, and you may be at a school that does have a license. Uh, Jump and Jump Pro were available through the campus licenses. Uh, we also have an agreement with onthehub.com if you'd like to get an individual copy. Uh, and you're, if you're interested in licensing Jump or learning more, uh, I'll suggest that you contact Chuck London. So it's chuck.london at jump.com. And I'll leave that up there. Um, so what did we talk about today? We talked about uh, tools for uh, summarizing and graphing data, and this was a review of uh, an earlier webinar. We talked about univariate and bivariate analysis. We saw least squares regression and logistic regression. We quickly saw some multivariate methods, which are all under multivariate methods, aptly named under analyze. Uh, and we also saw very quickly partition under the modeling platform. Uh, and keep in mind that there are a number of additional and advanced modeling tools available.